What's going on everyone, Bobby Marx here, and welcome back to my Journeyman series here on FM24. This is episode 23, and we're starting a new job with Bayer Leverkusen. So this is the current Bayer Leverkusen squad that I've inherited, and I have to say it is very, very good. They finished in fifth place last season, which is why the job has become available. They didn't qualify for the Champions League. However, they have an exceptional goalkeeper in John Jallo, uh, who's a sweeper-keeper, four-star average rating is England's number one. Uh, they have an exceptionally good Brazilian centre-back in Kleber Augusto. Uh, he's four and a half stars. He's very, very good. Leone is a good centre-back as well. He's a young Italian, 23, four-star rating there. Uh, they have two very good centre-midfielders in Jose Roberto and Mario Kubala. Um, 20 and 25, both very, very good. Four and a half, Kabbalah could go to five star. He's an intelligent centre midfielder, deep line playmaker. Um, they are very, very good centre midfielders. And then in terms of attack, they have so many different options. We've got far too many strikers, as you can see down there. Uh, Thunis, who was with me at Belgium, won the World Cup with me at Belgium. He's here. Uh, he can play out on the right as well, though. And they have a guy called Razvan Mihai, who is a potential four-star striker. They have Matteo Carlucci, who is a potential four-and-a-half-star striker. They have Vitaly Polyakov, who looks absolutely immense German striker. They're just blessed with so many talent in attack. Um... Not quite sure what we're going to do there. Some of them are going to have to leave. I can't. I only play with one striker. I thought about changing the formation round, but I kind of want to go with what's tried and tested, really. Uh, the only thing I've noticed about this, and I'll just change this over to general info so you can see. The only thing I've noticed about this is there's not many Germans in the squad. So there's, there's going to be a struggle to meet the homegrown quarter. So they have a few Germans down here. So this kid, Polyakov, I mean, this guy looks, he looks insane. Look at those stats, the mentals and physicals. His finishing's not great, but he's only 21 and he's already got 19 caps for Germany at 21. Reminds me of Lukas Podolski. So he's gonna be a key player for us. Uh, might have to keep this guy as a backup perhaps. Uh, Mihai, I think. I mean, he looks very good. I mean, look at those stats. He's got good finishing and composure. Just not quite pacey enough for me. Uh, could have done with a bit faster striker. I like a fast striker. So he might move on. Uh, we've got Flipzik here, who looks okay. Uh, let me show you this guy, Marco Cortez. He's a Mexican. You know I like the Mexicans. Look at his stats. He looks phenomenal, but look at how big he is. He's six foot eight. Six foot eight. Jesus. The giant is like a Mexican Peter Crouch. So they have a very, very good squad, but that's not all. We look at the finances. They're in a very strong final financial position, and they've given me 170 million to go strengthen this squad. There's a couple of areas I want to improve on, and there's a few Germans I need to try and bring in to flesh out that homegrown quarter. We're going to be playing in the Europa League, which is a competition that we should be trying to win. And uh, I think we've got a strong enough squad, really, and the budget to improve this into a team that can challenge for the Bundesliga as well. So I'm going to go away and do my summer transfer window, and then we'll come back in uh, the staffing needs improving as well, so I'll have a look at that and try and sort that out so that we've got yellows across the board if possible. Uh, there's a few vacancies that we can recruit people into, which should take that up a bit. But yeah, I'm I'm quite excited. I did, um, on FM23, I did my own personal save as Bayer Leverkusen, and I really enjoyed it, to be honest, so I'm quite chuffed that I managed to come here in this journeyman series and, and hopefully try and improve on them. They've only ever won the league once. That was a, th uh, a few years ago. 
Uh, so you can see the the honours down here. So they won the Bundesliga in 2035. Because the only time... They've never won it in real life. I didn't know this when I uh, took this save on with Bayer Leverkusen uh, in FM23. They've never, ever won the Bundesliga for such a big club. Never won it. And in real life, they're up there at the minute, aren't they? Near the top of the table. Uh, in fact, at the time of recording this, they are top of the table. But they're due to play Bayern Munich at the weekend. Um, and Xabi Alonso is doing a fantastic job. Obviously linked with the Liverpool job in the summer with Jurgen Klopp stepping down. But let's have a look at what we managed to do transfers-wise and we'll jump back in and have a look. Okay, so we've done quite a bit. We've brought in 289 million and we've spent 345. So we've done quite a bit of business and we've brought in some familiar faces, people that have helped me out at previous teams. Um, so the first one of those that I brought in that was with me at Monterey uh, was Alejandro Garcia. I brought him in from Leipzig for 58 million. He was transfer listed, he wasn't playing at Leipzig, uh, but he was the left winger that I had at Monterey. And he is very, very good. Left wing was a position that we needed to strengthen within the Leverkusen squad. And I think he can come in and do that. So let's have a quick look at him. Uh, so just looking at his mentals and his physicals, you know, even his technicals, he's a very, very good player. He's going to be fantastic for us on that left-hand side. Doesn't help with the homegrown quota. I appreciate that. Um, but he's going to be our left-wing starter for sure. Uh, Tunak is the most expensive sign-in. That's 70 million going up to potentially 80. So he's a centre-back. And although he's Turkish, he has a German passport. He's 21 years old. He's got decent stats. I think he's going to improve. His mentals are very good. His physicals are good for a 21-year-old. That's going to increase somewhat. Technicals, not brilliant, but okay. Uh, his passing, I kind of like defenders with better passing than that. But there's not a lot to choose from. And I don't know if it's just me on my FM and on this particular save... That a lot of the new gens that are coming through have got very poor passing. There's not many that have got decent passing statistic, which is a bit frustrating. But he looks okay. He's 21 years old. He can come in and play centre-back when the starters are tired or unavailable or whatever. So, yeah, I'm happy with him. It's a lot of money, but I am happy with that signing. He's got five-star potential. Uh, Boonia Rat. <laughs> Just... I love that name, Boonia Rat, uh, is a Mexican that I've managed to pick up from Leeds for 45 million. He can play again, wide left, also wide right, and striker. And look at this guy's stats. Dribbling 16, finishing 16, first touch 16, technique 16, flair 17, determination and composure both 17, pace 15, acceleration 16, balance 16, 19 years old. He's now worth between 78 and 92 million. He'll predominantly play as a striker. He is a wonder kid as well. Already got a cap for Mexico and has a Thailand passport. Boonia Rat, I guess, maybe is a Thai name. Seems a bit strange for somebody to be Mexican and Taiwanese. It's a strange combination, but hey, we're a diverse club. So he looks very good personality perfectionist as well really like that he's only two star at the minute but he's potential to be five star just need to use him in certain games robert albrecht was brought in from bayern munich he was in their reserves 40 million is a lot for a munich reserve player however he looks very good as well he can play on the wing uh, he's left footed he's uh, 22 years old no caps yet for germany played at under 21 level has okay stats, his physicals are better than his mentals and his technicals, but he's a good dribbler, uh, passing's okay, just need him to get some game time and improve a little bit. But yeah, the wings were the areas that we kind of needed to strengthen. So I feel like we've done that with Albrecht and Booniarat and Garcia. You know, we brought in some decent cover for those sides. Now I brought in Hurt and Cyan, who are both German, Brought these two in as centre midfielders. We did let a couple of centre midfielders go, not the two main ones that I spoke about earlier, um, but some reserve players. So I brought in Hurt and Seyan to cover those reserve areas. Both German, 
both helping with that homegrown quota. Sirio was brought in for 25, leading up to 30 million. He was our star player, wasn't he, at Sao Paulo? He looks fantastic, even at this level, passing 16, which uh, is something that I needed. Wanted something in the centre midfield that can play as a DM, that can uh, knock the ball around, dictate the tempo. He's fabulous for that. He's six foot three, left footer. He's going to be really good for us. He was fantastic for us at Sao Paulo, winning the Copa Libertadores there with us. And hopefully he can come in and win the Bundesliga and, and the uh, Europa League with us here this season. But yeah, for 25 to 30 million, you know, he's no-brainer, really. Uh, really pleased to have him here. Uh, I brought this lad in, Bomhart, and Bom Bomert, Bo Bohomert. Ah, I don't know. Uh, he's got into the under-19s for the time being. He's obviously looking at being loaned out as well. But he's going to be a decent player, 20 years old. Uh, again, German, helping with that homegrown quarter. Four and a half star potential ability. Just need some games under his belt and he'll come in and be able to do a job for us. Again, another wonder kid in the ranks. And again, another winger, just strengthening up those positions in the wing areas. He looks really good. 19 years old, already worth between 64 and 75 million. He's a winger, he's a perfectionist. He's also pretty physical, he's got 20 determination. He's also very quick, pace and acceleration is good. Dribbling is good, technique is good, passing is okay. 19 years old as I say, just again, need some game time. Have him in and around that first team, coming on and uh, appearing in the Bundesliga will hopefully move him on to being a really good talent. I couldn't turn this guy down uh, from America in Mexico, 8.75 million. You all know that I like the Mexicans. So, Jamilo, again, winger slash striker. Uh, but he's very, very good. His physicals are pretty impressive. Technicals are okay and his mentals are okay. Again, I think he will help with the squad depth and uh, cover some of those positions where we might lose key players. He's going to be uh, fabulous. You can already see down here in the first three games, he's got a goal and four assists. Uh, so, yeah, he's going to be a, a good talent for us in the squad this season. Again, another wonder kid. So, players out then, we made 289 million. Matthias was the first player to go. He was a striker. He was very good. Don't get me wrong. Uh, he's worth a hell of a lot of money now out there as well. But I was never going to play him. Uh, Polyakov is going to be my main striker and there was no room for this kid 26 years old he's only ever had one cap for Brazil um, so they can't think that much of him can they but yeah he, you know his physicals are good his technicals are pretty good he, he'll be a good player wherever he goes don't get me wrong uh, but I just couldn't fit him into the team anywhere and he was on a bit of money for us as well he was on like £200,000 a week so it was good to get him off the books Joseph Moose was another one. He was a centre midfielder. He was uh, pretty good. He would have played in that defensive midfield role. But when we bring in Sirio in, uh, a player that I trust, this guy was on a lot of money as well. Another uh, guy earning £200,000 a week. And Bayern Munich were desperate to take him. Uh, so moving him on was kind of the reason why I brought Sirio in. But yeah, he, he wanted to go. Bayern Munich wanted him. And I was able to get a high earner off the books for decent money. Brandon Nicole was somebody I didn't really want to let go, but he was on £250,000 a week. He was with me in Belgium for the World Cup. He was my right back slash uh, right winger. And he's a very, very good player. Um, but again, very much of a high earner. What I don't want to happen with Bayer Leverkusen is that we're getting in a position where we're spending a lot of money on wages, particularly in season one when we're not getting that Champions League money. So it was good to move him on and get some decent money for him. It's just a shame because I know how good he is. But again, Belgium needed the homegrown quota, needed to reinvest the money into strengthening the rest of the squad. So shame to let him go, but it is what it is. Uh, Le Sambo went out to Real Madrid. Uh, he was the fourth choice centre-back, really. Uh, French and Cambodian. 
was never going to play other than you know, when people were injured or tired or whatever. So I might as well get some money for him. Real Madrid wanted him, so got some money back in for him. Uh, David Campillo went to Barcelona for 34.5 million. Uh, again, he was another defensive midfielder. Looks okay on paper. Uh, but again, was never going to play for me and needed to just freshen up that homegrown quarter, so moved him on. And then the next biggest one was Cassiano for 20 million. He was the left winger here when I started and he just wasn't very good. His physicals are all right, um, but he was never really going to play for me and I needed to improve that area, which is why I brought Garcia in uh, and I brought a couple of the others in. But yeah, he's, he's all right, but he's not really my type of player, so moved him on for decent money. So this is the squad going into the season, which I'm very happy with. Uh, Jallo is the number one keeper. Uh, Augusto and um, Leone are probably going to play centre-back. Um, we have a couple of other choices there as well if we need them. In Tunaka we brought in an Uche, who is German as well. Uh, in terms of right backs, we've got Offhouse and Scalini, who I'm happy with both of them. Didn't really want to let either of those go. Sirio will play uh, DM generally. Grima will generally play left back, although he's 30. And he's only got a couple of years left on his contract, so we'll see how he goes on in the season. Rodriguez uh, will cover left back. He can also play as winger. He's a bit like Freddy Martinez, the Colombian that I had at Sao Paulo. Um, so yeah, Rodriguez is pretty good as well. Sayan's a boy I bought in uh, to cover defensive midfielder when Sirio's not available. And then we've got some decent choices in the wing areas now with Albrecht, Prieto, uh, we've got Garcia, Ondua can also play there, Thunis can play out that on that right or left, Serda is here, and then Buniarat and Jamilo can also play wing as well as striker. Polyakov is going to be the main striker for us. Um, Aston Villa are trying to chase him, but I've said I want 145 million. He's on 275,000 pound a week, which is a hell of a lot of money for a club like this, but I don't really want to lose him. We'll see how it goes. He's contracted to us for 2042, so he's got another four years left on his contract. So, yeah, Kabalu and Roberto will play centre midfield. They're absolutely fantastic. Uh, we will just struggle a little bit if one of those goes injured. Uh, but we've got Franco Raffaele, who can also play centre mid and um, defensive midfield if I need to put Sirio in the centre. So we're okay. Uh, probably one centre midfielder away from having a really good, really good squad. Uh, we have a fantastic starting eleven though. The starting eleven is probably one of the best in the league. So I'll be surprised if I don't challenge for the Bundesliga and for the Europa League. Uh, we've played three games so far and we've won all three. So we're doing really well. Um, so yeah, and we won the first round of the Pokal and we won all as friendlies. Uh, some nice victories there. 3-0 away at Inter. We beat Porto 2-1 at home. Udinese we beat 4-0. We had a 13-0 win against some Italian farmers and uh, like I say we've won the first three games in the Bundesliga fairly comfortably uh, in terms of the Europa League phase got some decent teams to play against uh, Newcastle, Sporting, Real Sociedad, Wolfsburg um, German team there in there with us as well so yeah I'm, I'm looking forward to it I'm looking forward to this season it's going to be interesting uh, so, yeah, let's see how we get on and then we'll jump back in around January time and see what uh, transfers we can do in the January transfer window. Following the closure of the transfer window, we started with Union Berlin and Polyakov opened the scoring in 11 minutes with a fabulous strike from the edge of the box. Three more goals were shared around the team before Polyakov got his second goal and made it 5-0. The young German completed his hat-trick when again... He was played through and that left foot placed the ball into the bottom corner and it so has run out 6-0 winners. Polyakov picked up his second hat-trick in a row after we beat Stuttgart 5-3 at home, his first goal coming on 8 minutes. 
and then a short free kick saw Polyakov drive a right footed strike into the bottom corner for his second. And after Jaramillo robbed the ball, he played through Roberto, who again played Polyakov in, and a fantastic left footed strike saw the hat trick complete. We were brought back down to earth though with a 1 0 away defeat at Wolfsburg. And that followed a 2 1 away defeat at Wolfsburg in the second round of the Pokal. However, a home win against Leipzig, followed by a 4 1 win in Mainz, and a 3 0 home win against Kaiserslautern, so was recovering top spot once again. It looked like we were going to get an important draw in Munich. However, Schultz's long cross found Kill Jung in the 93rd minute, and Bayern Munich took a 2 1 lead. And that soon became 3 1 when Canu chipped it over Jalo in the 95th minute, giving Munich all three points. However, the defeat at Bayern Munich revitalised the team, and we won seven from the next seven, dropping no points in a run that featured victories over Borussia Dortmund, Cologne and Borussia Mönchengladbach. The Europa League didn't get off to the best of starts, with a 0-0 draw away at Newcastle, followed by a 0-0 draw at home to Sport in Lisbon. And then we'd gone three games without a victory or even a goal scored when Real Sociedad beat us at home 1-0. But back-to-back 3-0 victories over Apoel and Coyenspor helped to give us a bit of hope. We then travelled to Lyon in France for a bit of a crunch game, but when Caballo picked up the ball on the right-hand side, he drove forward and passed it to an unmarked Polyakov to give us a 1-0 lead after just four minutes. And after a bit of a goal mouth scramble, the ball fell to Albrecht to make it 2-0 on 21 minutes. And the game was pretty much dead and buried on the 80th minute when Caballa's ball found Jaramillo, whose low left-footed strike beat Margraf in the Lyon goal. 3-0 up with 10 minutes to go. And in stoppage time, Sirio's absolute wonder strike made it 4-0 and put us in a very strong position going into the remaining two games. So things are going really well with 1-15 out of the first 17 losing just two. We've only conceded 13 goals, which I'm really pleased about. We've scored 50, which is a hell of a lot. Uh, so the two defeats come away at Bayern Munich and away at Wolfsburg. Wolfsburg are a fairly strong team uh, in the division this season. So they're in second place at the minute. And Bayern Munich are in third place. So we're top by six points. And that's because Wolfsburg have drawn the three games that we won. We've lost the same amount. Uh, and Bayern Munich are just a point behind Wolfsburg. Europa League's gone okay. We didn't get off to the best of starts. Um, first three games not winning any. But there's been some tough games. And I think we should have beaten Real Sociedad at home. But, you know, it is what it is. We lost 1-0. Uh, and the home draw to Sport in Lisbon was a bit frustrating. Um, I'm not too bothered about the 0-0 draw away at Newcastle because they're a fairly good side. And then we've had the comfortable wins against uh, Apoel and Konya Spore. And then a fantastic away 4-0 win at Lyon. So yeah, we've still got Wolfsburg and Genk to play, both home games. So I'm confident that we'll get through to the next round. That's how the table's looking at the minute. And I think, you know, we get six points. It puts us on 17. I think that should be enough for us to finish in a automatic spot to go through to the round 16 rather than having to go through the qualifiers but there's some tough teams in here so it, you know it's going to be difficult we've obviously struggled against Sport in Lisbon and as we know they've got a decent side I nearly ended up going there as, as their manager Roma are very good they won 6 out of 6 uh, Newcastle are a fairly big side Marseille are a big side Arsenal are in here they're still in the qualifying spots with ourselves uh, and Lazio are in here as well so there is some big sides in the Europa League it's not going to be playing sailing for us to try and challenge for this and as you've seen from the first three games it's you know it's tough but we'll see what we can do in January see if we can strengthen the side a little bit and give us a better chance on competing for the Europa League and the Bundesliga so Go away and do that, and I'll come back uh, first of Feb time-ish. Okay, we're back, and there's been some significant ins and outs. 
I'll start with the outs this time because that's where the majority of the business has been done. Uh, so we let Franco Raffaele go to Liverpool for up to 73 million. Uh, he wanted to leave. Marco Cortez was the uh, the Mexican Peter Crouch that you'll remember. Uh, 31 and a half million. He's gone to Porto. I've let Prieto go out on loan to Kaiserslautern to get him some game time, and I've let Leone go to Chelsea for up to 97 million. Uh, he was one of his first choice centre backs, but. I'll be honest with you, Tunac's playing very well when he's playing, and I'd rather Tunac play. Leone's very good, but he's Italian, and I need to I need to keep going by getting more and more homegrown players into the squad because that has been a major challenge for us to register a full squad because we've only had like three or four homegrown players. It's been difficult, and we've done a lot. We did a lot in the summer to try and rectify that, uh, but I just need to keep doing it probably January and then um, in the summer transfer window. Um, so I brought two players in. Uh, one of them is another familiar name, Michael Hurtado, who I had at Sao Paulo, and he'd gone to Bayern Munich before I'd taken the Leverkusen job on. Him and Aponza both left Sao Paulo. Aponza's at Manchester City, and Hurtado had gone to Bayern Munich. But he'd not been playing, um, and... I know 75 million is a lot, but he's a wonderful talent and he can play right wing slash striker. Now at the minute, Funis is generally playing there, but he's 30, he's on 275,000 pound a week, I think, and he's wanted. And that's why I brought Hotedo in because I think at some point, Funis is gonna move on. So, and then I won't need to replace Funis. Uh, I've replaced that position because so I've already got Hurtado there. Uh, Smoldone, I'll just have a quick look at him. Uh, so he's a German centre back, uh, which I brought in to replace Leone. So well, he's kind of replacing Tunac. Tunac's going to start um, alongside Augusto and Smoldone and Uche now are both there as reserves. So there, Smoldone and Uche are both German, and then Tunak, albeit is Turkish, has a German passport and is qualified as homegrown. So at the four centre-backs, there's only one now, whilst as foreign. So yeah, um, I feel like it's smart business. It's probably weakened us, I would say. Uh, which wasn't the direction I kind of wanted to go in. I did want to try and improve the squad, uh, but I think it will in the long run. Uh, Raffaele and Leone were both very good players, but the fact that I've got you know, 170 million for the pair of them. So, let's see how the rest of the season goes. The first game after the January transfer window closed, so as away at Stuttgart and Sirio's left footed drive in the top corner was enough to give us a 2-1 win away from home. We then played Wolfsburg at home who had beaten us twice already this season. However, with the game 0-0 in the 89th minute, Ayala brought Polyakov down and it was a chance for us to take the lead and claim all three points. Up stepped World Cup winner Joe Thunis and his penalty was saved. The game finished, 0-0. However, we got a fantastic 3-0 result in Leipzig with Polyakov getting two and Sirio the third. We then won his next two games with a home 1-0 victory over Mainz and a 2-1 win away at Kaiserslautern. Bayern Munich were up next and they were just seven points behind us in the league, so it was a game that we must not lose. In a game where it was difficult to pick out who was on whose team, after 53 minutes the game was still nil-nil. However, Jose Roberto found Polyakov and his nice little chip beat Goodedge to give us a 1-0 lead. Over on the 68th minute, Bayern Munich scored one of the best goals I've probably seen on Football Manager, playing the ball out of the back quite rapidly to release Pereira, whose shot was blocked, and Brezig's equalising for Bayern. The score stayed 1-1, and although we avoided defeat, the point at home against them was a little bit frustrating, considering Wolfsburg and Bayern both beat us away, and we were only able to draw with them at home. But following that, we went out to Karlsruhe, where we managed to get a 4-1 away win, followed by a 2-0 win at home to Werder Bremen. 
But then we suffered an absolute collapse at Dortmund, losing 4-0. We picked up a valuable 3-1 win at home to Cologne, which means we only had one game left to win out of our remaining three. With games away to Hertha Berlin and Borussia Mönchengladbach, the home game at Hoffenheim was the one I was hoping we would claim the victory from. But we didn't need to wait for the Hoffenheim game, as straight from the kickoff in Berlin, we played some nice little football around. Polyakov leading out to Garcia, who played it back to Roberto, and right foot drive after 20 seconds gave us a 1-0 lead. And the lead was doubled just four minutes later when the ball fell to Polyakov in the six yard box, and he makes no mistake from that distance. And then early in the second half, Garcia picked up the keeper's loose ball and made it 3 0, giving us the Bundesliga title. And we may have lost the remaining two games, but after playing a little bit of a reserve side to rest players for the Europa League, so after all 34 games had concluded, we finished a point above Bayern Munich and claimed a Bundesliga title for the second time in Bayer Leverkusen's history. The round of 16 gain against Sporting Lisbon were as tough as they come and they have an exceptionally good side. And after a 1-1 draw in Lisbon, the return leg also finished 1-1, which meant that this game was going to be decided by a penalty shootout. Kabala didn't get off to the best of starts, missing the first penalty for us, but Jalu repeated that feat and saved the penalty from Galdino. Otado had the chance to give us the lead and he did just that. Bonte, though, his penalty was saved by Jallo, and following this, every other penalty was eventually scored, which meant that we went through 4-2 in the penalty shootout. AZ Altmar was up in the quarterfinals, but Polyakov made no mistake in giving us the lead just on 20 minutes. The lead was doubled on the 43rd minute when Kabala stepped up for a penalty and made it 2-0. Our third goal came just after the break, after Jose Roberto's through ball was left by the defenders, only for Polyakov to get through on goal, but the tackle led it straight into Thunis's pass, making it 3-0. And Polyakov got his second of the game when Scalvini's cross found him in between the AZ defenders, and it was 4-0, and we were technically flying into the semi-finals. The game finished 5-1 and the home leg was 0-0. Leon was up next in the semi-finals and after beating them quite comfortably in the group stages, I felt like we had a very good chance, but Colho scored after five minutes and we were behind 1-0. That being said though, we levelled up after a corner from Garcia was fed back to Polyakov who looked for Augusto and his ball through to Roberto was met by his left foot making it 1-1. We then found ourselves with a penalty and Caballo's not missed one yet this season and he didn't miss again. 2-1. We made it 3-1 on the 72nd minute when Hurtado met Garcia's pass and we were starting to look quite comfortable. That was until Leon's corner was met by Colo who scored his second of the game and gave Leon a glimmer of hope. Any chance of a comeback was snuffed out a few minutes later though when Garcia's corner was met wonderfully by the head of Sirio. The home tie finishing 4-2 with us having 33 shots but only 13 on target. And the second leg didn't really offer anything up with a game finishing 0-0 and us going through to the Europa League final after a 4-2 aggregate win. Where we'd face Arsenal who we sold Matthias to in the summer and who sent a midfield is controlled by Schalstrate, the Belgium World Cup winner. Okay, so we're here for the Europa League final. Eunice is carrying an injury, which is rather frustrating, and then Offhouse and Rodriguez are both now injured. Uh, we can't name three players on the bench, so we've only managed to name nine, because uh, that's just how small our squad is at the minute. Uh, Hurtado is going to play on the right-hand side, in the absence of Thunis, who is on the bench, probably won't come on. Um, other than that, we've got as first choice 11 out. Arsenal's going to be a tough game though, but I'm hoping that we've got enough in the tank to get this over the line and get a European trophy. Okay, we're here for the Europa League final. 
I'm loving that music in the background. There's the starting lineup. It's a very good team. Shouldn't be any excuses. But we are playing against a very good team in Arsenal. Not quite sure where they finished in the Premier League. But they are one of the big six, so I'll be very surprised if they're not up there or thereabouts. Let's get into it. Drop that down a little bit so we can enjoy the highlights when they come. We've had nothing so far in the first 15 minutes, but here is a corner. Chalstrate playing for Arsenal. Judas. He was my main guy, wasn't he, at Belgium, if you remember the last episode of the World Cup. And they've taken the lead. Clayson gets his fifth goal of the season. And we're 1-0 down. Yeah, Charles Strati was my main man for the Belgium national team when we won the World Cup. So, I feel a bit, a bit bad that he's playing for the opposition now. I'd love to have brought him here, but he's worth like 300 million. Potatoes through. Potatoes through. Is he going to play it across? He's not. He's just going to bang it into the goal. And it's 1-1. One, one. We've hit straight back. And the man that is only in the team, because Thunis is injured, has pulled his level. Schalstrati again with another corner. Whipping it in. It's a nice clearance, though. Bonagosto, don't let him pass you. Take it off him. Oh, excellent tackle. That's a foul. Oh, he's, he's ridden it. Ridden it. What a player Augustus is. Roberto plays it through to Polyakov. Who's going to... Is he going to play gas here through? Play gas here through. Get in the box, Polyakov. Get in the box. Get in the box. Roberto. Oh, he's just gone wide. Oh. Still got Fresneda playing right back. How is he still going? He must be like 40. Sirio, Tunac. Going back to Jallo. Augusto is booked for some reason. And we're just playing it around. I like this, I like this. Grima. Sirio has got plenty of time in the ball. Plays it through to Polyakov. Roberto plays Gas here through. And he's through on goal, but his shot is whipped. Way too far wide. I'm surprised Arsenal are going with a 4 4 2. You don't see that anymore, do you? You don't see a standard 4 4 2 anymore. You might see it in the lower leagues, but you don't see it really in the top tiers of professional football anymore. It's a fairly even game. Uh, what shall we do? Let's go with that one. Let's see if that one helps. So, even game, 1-1. One, one. Not much highlights again, first 10 minutes. Well, it's our turn for a corner this time. Garcia is going to whip it in. Plays it in, but it's easy. Oh, I was going to say it was easily cleared, but he didn't quite get enough on it. I'm not sure what's going on. It's a penalty! I don't know how or why we've got a penalty, but we have. And Kabalu has put us 2-1 up. I had I've no idea what happened there. But if the ref wants to give me a penalty, I'll take a penalty all day long. <laughs> Roberto De Zerbi is the Arsenal manager I've just seen. Which is interesting. Uh, that could happen in the future, I guess. You know, he's a very talented young coach. I can see him managing a top team uh, after he's finished his job at Brighton. Five minutes to go with 2-1 up. Uh, free kick here. Garcia looks like he's stood over. No, it's Jose Roberto that stood over it. And is he going to shoot? I think he's going to shoot here. No, nope, he's played it across to Hurtado. Plays it through Sirio, and it is three. I'm not quite sure if he was offside. Doesn't look like it, but it was a wonderfully well-worked goal, and it looks like the Europa League... He's coming to Germany. Arsenal are going to try and bounce straight back from the kickoff. Play it about here. Plays it down, but we've managed to clear. Kabalu's got the ball. 
Oh, yes, that's it. Just keep the ball, boys. Keep the ball. Play it around. Scalini. Tata Kabala. Sirio. Grima. Playing it forward. Garcia. Lost the ball, but Grima's picked it back up. And he's played Garcia back in. And it's four. Polyakov makes it 4-1. And that is that. Europa League champions, Bundesliga champions. What a great first season here in Leverkusen for us. Absolutely wonderful. Loving the music, loving the animation. Go pick up your trophy, lads. Fully deserved. Absolutely brilliant. Do we stay another season, though? Kind of like the pock out. But do we stay just for that? I don't know. I guess we see what jobs comes up in the summer as to whether we stay or not. But I would be happy to stay another season here in Leverkusen and see if we can compete for the Champions League as well as the Pokal and defend the Bundesliga title. But we'll see what jobs come up and we'll see whether there is anything interesting elsewhere that will help us achieve the Champions League. Because if a Real Madrid or a Barcelona comes up, that'd be tough to ignore. <laughs> But thank you for watching. Hope you've enjoyed the video and I will see you all in the next one. Bye for now.